Hi everybody, welcome to our TNT for Thursday. We're not at Chip Fair Lele today. We're coming to you from an Amazon cafe on the road to Kaolac. Because one, I wanted my coffee and two, well I needed somewhere quiet to sit down before I get my studio established in my, my new home. Anyway, here we are, plenty to talk about. Now yesterday I did mention that uh, we were looking forward to seeing the sort of selfie we might see between Taksin Shinawat and the former Cambodian PM, uh, Hun Sen. Well, we've got it. Kalsod English on their Facebook page, uh, along with everybody else who shared the same photo, uh, said the former Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen posted on Facebook on Wednesday his photos with ex-Premier Taksin Shinawat and Per Thai leader Patongtan Shinawat and wrote the bond of friendship has been strengthened. He adds Patongtan has been invited to visit Cambodia on March 14 and 15. And the two former Prime Ministers met and didn't talk about politics. That's just brought back memories of 32 years of friendship. Thank you, brother and niece. Patongtan Shinawat, the daughter of Taksin Shinawat, a potential future prime minister. And guess who the current prime minister is in Cambodia at the moment? Hmm, the son of Hun Sen. So a bit more about this story in BangkokPost.com reporting. Hun Sen visits Taksin at his Bangkok home. And Taksin 74 and Hun Sen 71 developed a strong friendship during their many years in power. The Cambodian strongman reportedly decided to visit Taksin at his home out of a personal concern for his health. I don't suppose he's got much else to do at the moment, maybe leaning over his son's shoulder from time to time, giving a little bit of advice. Just thinking in other places around Southeast Asia, you've got Singapore, where the current Prime Minister is the son of Lee Kuan Yew. And then we've got the current president of the Philippines is the son of Ferdinand Marcos. So uh, it seems that keeping it in the family is quite popular in Southeast Asia. Uh, a bit more about this story, we go to calcidenglish.com. They've written quite a long piece. Thai ex-Prime Minister Taksin gets free on parole, but can he restore his old political luster? Now, the story basically just goes through uh, the, what's been happening with Taksin over the past and the recent past with his detention. Uh, and it finishes with this line. His youngest daughter, Patongtan Shinawat, who recently became Per Thai uh, party chief, on Sunday afternoon posted a photo on her Instagram account of Taxon sitting in shorts by a swimming pool, still wearing a neck brace and sling on his arm. And she said, after not breathing air and seeing the sun on the outside for 180 days, or just moving past the biological impossibility of that, uh, and not being back to his house for 17 years, Dad came to sit outside like this. He sat there for quite some time. Well, really just looking quite forlorn and lonely. And I, I do get the impression just uh, sort of seeing these photos that this is a, an elderly man who's got a few health problems that is just grateful to be back home with his family. I don't think he's going to be playing much role in the future of Thai politics, despite all the speculation in Thai media. I think that really is just a lot of talk, and Taxon just really wants to stay at home and uh, spend a bit of time with his grandkids. Then again, not everybody is a Taxon supporter. Also from the Kalsod English uh, Facebook page, anti-Taxon demonstrators on Wednesday submitted a, a petition letter to a representative of the National Anti-Corruption Commission in Nontobri Province to look into the role of the Justice Minister in granting parole to the inmate Taxon Shinawat. So he certainly still has his detractors and people who would, well, still like to see him in prison. Anyway, moving on from that story at the moment, we go to the BangkokPost.com and poll body ready to take up Move Forward case. So the problems aren't over yet for the Move Forward party. And the full text of the Constitutional Court's ruling against the Move Forward party has been submitted to the Election Commission, so it can now begin considering whether to recommend the party be dissolved. 
And this is according to a lawyer, Tiurat Suan Kasson. He brought the original complaint before the court, which ruled on January the 31st that the party's advocacy of amendments to the Les Majeste law represented an intention to undermine the constitutional monarchy. And he's now asked the Election Commission to initiate dissolution proceedings against the main opposition party under Section 92 of the Organic Law on Political Parties. And with the text of the court ruling now at its disposal, the Election Commission is expected to reach a decision within 90 days. So more nail-biting for the Move Forward Party, some sort of a long hangover from May's election last year. Now, let's look at uh, some of the movements of tourism in the South over the past uh, month or so. BangkokPost.com reporting Europeans drive up room rates in the South. And the South, I suppose, referring there to places like Krabi, Phuket, Panga. And longer stays from European guests helped drive room revenue in the first quarter in southern provinces, as room rates set a new record despite a small number of Chinese tourists. A little bit of a confusing first sentence there. The highest number of tourists for the past two months have been Chinese arrivals. European tourists don't even figure in the top five. And the former president of the Tourism Council of Panga said the first quarter of this year will likely be the best season in five years. So it looks like they're specifically referring to Panga province, which is just north of Phuket. And Mr Pongsakorn said many hotels in the province, especially in Kaolak, can charge higher room rates of between six to 10,000 baht per night, exceeding the average of 5,000 baht in 2019, which was a peak tourism year for Thailand. And the majority of tourists are Germans, Scandinavians and Russians who opted for the province's serene nature experiences and stayed for weeks to a month. Yep, that demographic usually stays for longer and they usually try and get out of some of the busier tourist spots. Although the Chinese market recorded the largest number of arrivals in Thailand, with, well, that's nearly a million of 5.2 million tourists, Panga rarely gained this market. And many Chinese tourists opt for more lively and urban experiences, such as Phuket and Bangkok, instead of a nature-oriented destination like Panga. The Chinese contributed only 5 to 10% of the foreign tourist market for the province. That compares to numbers like, uh, say, 20% in places like Phuket and uh, Bangkok. The president of the Krabi Tourism Association said Krabi still lacks direct flights from China, which previously had services from five to six Chinese cities before the pandemic. However, the province now has charter flights from Stockholm, Warsaw and Prague, with regular scheduled flights from major markets like Dubai, Singapore and Malaysia. Interesting to see how different provinces have different tourism demographics. And he said the top markets for Krabi at present were Sweden, Malaysia, Poland and the UK, and all of them had higher expenditure, resulting in 20 to 30 percent higher room rates than in 2019. So interesting to sort of see some of the things happening in places other than Phuket, Pattaya, Chiang Mai and Bangkok. And thanks for joining us on our Thursday program. It's the 22nd of February. And thank you to our sponsors, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinephuket.com. You can check out their website and see all the great destinations you can go on their bespoke charter tours. And good morning to Sean and the team. We're now going to thaipbsworld.com and man arrested in Pattaya following vicious attack on Chinese tourists. And Pattaya police have arrested a 41-year-old Thai man for attempting to rob, rape, detain and set fire to a Chinese tourist in Chonbury. This happened on Sunday. And the suspect, identified only as Tib, allegedly confessed to police, claiming that he had initially tried to rape the tourist, but when that failed, he stole her belongings and tried to kill her by setting her on fire before escaping. And the crime has widely been reported in Thailand. On Weibo, a Chinese microblogging website, there were, however, only two posts about the crime, but they received thousands of comments. I'm hardly surprised. 
Most of those commentators maintained that Thailand remains a dangerous place for Chinese tourists, and they wrote that they're not confident about travelling to Thailand, while others recommended that their compatriots do not visit Thailand. One commentator wrote, Thailand is not the same as before, and it's not safe for female tourists. I would be interested to hear what you think about that comment, uh, not just for Chinese tourists, but do you think Thailand is less safe now than perhaps it used to be? And what about for female tourists? Uh, if you are a single female tourist, do you feel safe travelling around Thailand? And more on that story, the female victim identified only as Lin told police on Sunday that the suspect had offered her and her brother a motorcycle ride. The suspect took her on a circuitous route before forcing her to get off the vehicle and tying her hands with a rope. According to Lynn, the suspect failed to rape her because she fought back. So he then lit a fire around her, probably in an attempt to kill her, before escaping on the motorcycle. She managed to escape by burning the rope around her wrists and contacted her brother before alerting the police. The man who had offered her brother a ride showed up yesterday, denying that he had anything to do with the crime. Well, that is a particularly nasty crime. I'm pretty sure that will be doing the rounds in Chinese media. And moving to the south of Thailand now, like the deep south, and this from ThaiPBSWorld.com. Two scouts killed and 13 others injured in a road accident in Sadao district. Now, we often report about problems in the rest of south, but this appears to be well, just a common road accident. And a boy and girl scout were killed and 13 others and their teacher injured when a pickup truck rammed into the roadside pavilion in which they were resting. Uh, this happened yesterday morning. The scouts had left their school for a long distance walk in the company of their teacher. And after having covered a substantial distance, they took a rest at a roadside pavilion. A pickup truck travelling at speed then struck the pavilion, crushing and scattering those inside before it came to stop against a mango tree. Moving now from the Deep South to problems in the police department, and this is reported in BangkokPost.com, many cops in serious debt, and not the ones at the checkpoint uh, just outside my town. And many police have fallen into debt, totaling some 300 billion baht, and most are on the verge of bankruptcy. This is according to the National Police Chief Torsak. And uh, in opening up to a committee, Police General Torsak said many officers were in bad shape financially, having accrued some 300 billion baht in debt and are in danger of being declared bankrupt. They were struggling to even own a house. He said senior officers urge junior police to be more spirited in their work, maintaining peace and order. However, officers' quality of life must also meet certain standards. He also pointed to a manpower shortage due to COVID-19 in the past three years. He said a police station near Bangkok had space for up to 200 officers. Uh, however, only half the positions are currently filled. And he said replacements in several positions were needed to prevent the shortage worsening. But until the shortage is resolved, police stations have uh, had to reassign some staff and send others to work elsewhere to stations running critically short of staff. And whilst that uh, Bangkok police station appears to have a critical shortage, I imagine there are similar shortages at other police stations around Thailand. And uh, that's it for today's uh, TNT report. A quick whip around of the things happening around Thailand. Big thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. Please subscribe to the channel. It's been great having you with us for the past 15 minutes or so. And we'll see you again tomorrow.